celebrate one another. But it seems like that has somewhat changed in that tolerance to be, you know what, I will, I will tolerate uh, you, but you must also agree that my views are just as good and as valid as yours. And if we don't have those same views that, well, that's good for you, but you know what, that, this is good for me, but they're equal and they're the same. If we don't have that view, we're looked at as being intolerant. And, um, and really, when it comes to understanding every religion and uh, the word religion, I, I sometimes think of it this way. I think of religion as reconnecting to God. Um, religion is a way for human beings to have relationship and connect with a, a, a living God. Um, but most religions, in fact, all of the religions that are set apart from Christianity, what makes Christianity unique is that all of the other religions are out there to me seem like they are, um, there's things that we do in order to bridge that gap between us and God. Um, for example, there may be enlightenment. I have to get to this place of enlightenment or I have to go through these certain steps I have to go through these hoops and and it's really all about what I do in order to reconnect to God um, but when you really consider Jesus and the difference is that when Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life and no one comes to the Father except through me he was really setting himself apart from every other religion so every religion has to um, they have to be able to answer the questions of where did I come from? You know, what is the origin of life? Where, what was the beginning? Uh, we have to answer the questions of what is the meaning of life? What is our, our purpose? Uh, where does morality come from? You know, how do we know what's right or wrong? Uh, what about our destiny? What happens after this life? Where are we, where are we headed? Does that religion bring a sense of freedom where there's an ability to choose? And then finally, there is, um, in religion, especially during these times of, of COVID-19, and we, we kind of consider suffering, you know, everyone, you know, is giving up certain rights right now, certain freedoms, but there are people that are really suffering. And so how does that religion deal with suffering? So when Jesus said this, when he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me, um, that's very narrow. And what he was saying is that if you want life and you want to be relinked, reconnected to God the Father, the only way is really through Jesus. Now, if we consider roads, and sometimes people say all roads lead to God, that is actually um, not logical. And I'm not, not trying to put people down. I'm just, I'm just trying to think logically about this. Uh, what is a road? A road is a pathway that gets you from point A to point B. Can you imagine driving on a freeway and just saying, hey, I'm driving. Hey, where are you going? Um, you know, I am headed towards Yosemite. Do you know how to get there? It really doesn't matter because all roads will get there. We know that that's not reality. That's not the truth. Um, a road is a pathway to get from one destination to another destination. If you consider Buddhism, Buddhism has a different destination than Christianity does. In fact, um, there would be some Buddhists that in a sense are even atheistic or um, agnostic in their belief that there even is a God. You don't even need God in order to um, believe in the path of Buddhism. Or when you think about Hinduism in reincarnation and um, the many different lives that a person would go through in order to bump themselves up to an, another state of being and try to get it right that next time, that's, that's a different destination. You know, when, um, so when you think about these different religions, um, even Islam having a, having a different destination and, and the description of heaven being totally different than the description of, of heaven um, in, in the Bible. So, not all roads um, will lead to God because not all roads go to the same destination. And if there really is a God on the other end, he has a way that he's provided for us to get to him. Now the problem, the thing that keeps us away from God, that the barrier really is our, our sin. 
Um, our sin has separated us from God. Uh, think about it this way. Um, the sun is a good thing. We love the sun. Today, today it's overcast. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to spring really arriving and, and uh, you know, summer, especially, uh, you know, they say that in, in the summer when the heat starts to um, rise, that it, it'll cause this virus to kind of dissipate a little bit. We don't know, but, but that'd be great. So the sun is a good thing. I love to get out into the sun, but the closer that you get to the sun, the sun becomes a very dangerous thing. In fact, if you go so close to the sun and you don't have any type of pr protection, even if you do have protection, eventually the closer and closer that you get to the sun, the more that you would burn up. And it doesn't matter what type of spacecraft it is, uh, doesn't matter what type of material, it would eventually burn up. Think about God's holiness in that way. God is good. And in his holiness, you know, we have glimpses of that. But if, if the full... Um, unleashed power and goodness of God's holiness um, were to come upon us and we were to approach his holiness, we, we would burn up. There's no way we could approach him. The problem, the thing that keeps us away is our sin. And what is sin? Well, sin, you know, there are some people that don't even say that there's a sin, you know, that there is a such thing or even a such thing as evil. It, it blew me away during the uh, the interviews after the Las Vegas shooting, you remember that. You remember someone um, opening fire on people that were at a concert, and we have we have friends of friends that were there um, at that at that concert. And as the you know as the shooting is going on, and then afterwards in the aftermath, it just it looked crazy when you look at that outdoor concert and you see all of the different. Um, things that people had left behind. You could just feel the chaos and the tension and the fear. And and then they interviewed some people and they asked this question, was that evil? People asked a question. Um, in fact, it was um, Ray Comfort who asked the question, is what happened um, evil? And I was shocked that people said, well, you know, it was really bad, but I don't, I don't know if that person was was necessarily evil. He he might have been mentally ill, or you know he might have been uh, he might have gotten hurt, or things may have happened. And I, it was interesting to me that people were so hesitant to call evil evil. See, the thing is, is that in our world that we live in today, there really is evil. There are actions that people take, and and granted not all evil is the same in, in consequence. Obviously, that is going to be much, much worse than maybe taking a $5 bill. But one thing that we can know is this. Even within ourselves, it says in Romans that there's a conscience that God has built into us. That even the person that doesn't necessarily follow Christ knows when they're doing something wrong. And there's that conviction of sin. So what the world will say is that many people say, hey, guilt is bad. You got to you got to get rid of that guilt. And and guilt actually could be a good thing at times if it leads us to a way to alleviate that guilt. I remember when Tiger Woods, um, when it came out that he had committed adultery and uh, that was multiple times and his life was kind of falling apart. I remember that he said that he was going to pull away from golf for a while. He was going to try to get his life in order. And really, it was going to be to decide between two religions. He had kind of narrowed it down to Buddhism or Christianity. And there was one reporter who was a Christian. And in the opinion part um, on the news, he said, I just want to commend to you, Tiger Woods, to choose Christianity. Because Christianity is the only religion that not only alleviates guilt, but actually helps you to deal with the the fact that you really are guilty because there's forgiveness in what Jesus has done for us on the cross. So as we head towards Easter, um, it doesn't feel like that right now. You know, it doesn't feel like Lent or Easter season. You know, everyone's kind of, you know, the news of, of this virus is kind of the main thing that's on people's minds. But yet, as time goes on, I think people are asking deeper questions, asking questions about origin, about meaning, about purpose, about destiny, about good versus evil. And in the meantime, what we could do is not only as Christians, if we are followers of Christ, not only to be strengthened in our faith, 
but also to share the hope that we have with others. Because people are asking those theological, more, um, you know, existential questions during times like this. So God gives the provision for evil that Jesus takes our sin upon himself. And as he takes that sin upon himself, how do we enter into relationship with God? How, how do we approach that holiness like we talked about the sun and the brightness and the power and the heat? How do we approach that intensity of God and his goodness? Well, Jesus came to take our sin upon himself and the punishment for our sin was upon him. So I want to encourage you during times like this to lean in to um, these times and really study to show yourself approved. If you have doubts, if you have questions, don't struggle alone. I, I think many times people have these doubts and instead of going to the the church or people that have an um, understanding, they'll, they'll just Google it. Um, and there's so many different opinions that are, are out there. Um, you know, one of the things that I'm, I'm blessed by is the fact that I've had most of the questions that you guys have had. It's okay to have doubts as long as during those doubts, um, we, we look for the answers and we're willing to follow those answers wherever they would go. A couple of books I want to uh, commend to you. This is an old one. Uh, this one, I know it's backwards on the video, but it's Answers to Tough Questions by Josh McDowell and Don Stewart. That's been a great one. Um, really helpful. Uh, Josh McDowell and his son, Sean McDowell, has, have written another one. It's 77 Frequently Asked Questions About God in the Bible, Your Toughest Questions Answered. Um, those are beginnings. You know, it, it doesn't mean like it's going to be just a pat answer, but but there's a beginning um, and as we study, and I just want to encourage you on these Theology Thursdays to ask your questions, uh, to put them in the comments, um, to email, to write on our Facebook page, and in the succeeding Thursdays, we want to answer some of those. Um, because I, I think that there are times that people have the questions, but they're kind of afraid to ask, even within the church. Um, sometimes our kids have those questions, and they're afraid to ask. And, and maybe they don't know that we have doubts also. Maybe they don't know that we've struggled at times with our own faith or we've gone through hard times that have caused us um, to doubt. Um, but know that in, in the midst of those doubts, that God is bigger than all of our doubts. One other book, uh, Five Minute Apologetics for Today by Ron Rhodes. Um, great book. Um, so, you know, Ravi Zacharias, his uh, uh, RZIM is a great place to go if you have questions. It's a great place to to send other people to as well. Um, you know, I, I threw this out there and this is all new as far as the order of like, hey, topics that we're going to cover. So I know that in the future we'll have more questions. I was really only given one question um, and, and this question was uh, kind of about the Passover and does the Passover kind of reflect um, the last days and end times things? And I think that there are a lot of things when we look at the feasts of Israel and how those things kind of line up with the Bible. But I, I do want to share this in Matthew chapter um, in Matthew chapter twenty four. People were asking Jesus questions about his coming, and and he he answered. You know, they they said, "What would be the signs of these things?" and and um, and the time of, of your coming. And when Jesus answered, he talked about how there would be wars and rumors of wars, that there would be earthquakes, there would be famines, there would be pestilence, all of these things. And he said, these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they'll, he talked about the tribulation, they'll deliver you up. And then uh, many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. But here's the one that I want to focus on right now. And it's this simple one. It's in Matthew 24, 12. And it says, because lawlessness will increase, lawlessness will abound or sin will increase the love of many will grow cold. And I think that we have to be careful ourselves, if, if you're a follower of Christ, not to allow our, our love for Jesus to grow cold. Um, you know, Jesus talked about, you know, he wants us to be either, he'd rather us be hot or, or cold. You know, cold being someone that doesn't know the Lord, they still have a chance. Or he wants us to be hot. He wants us to be really fervent in our love and passion for him. But, but really not lukewarm because lukewarm is um, where he says like it's like 
I'll spit you out of my mouth. And, and what that is, is that in that lukewarmness, um, you know, we're not so cold that we have this need for God and we don't know God and, and we're not hot, we're not on fire for him. But and, and I'm not advocating at all salvation by works. Like, hey, we have to be good enough. We have to be passionate enough. But, but what I am saying is this, when sin increases, um, our love for God begins to grow cold. How do I increase in my love for God? How do I increase in my zeal for God? Draw near to him. I want to leave you with the encouragement to draw near to God because he says when you draw near to him, he will draw near to you. Like any good relationship, it takes time. Like any good relationship, it means that we open ourselves up to someone. We share those things. And then we listen as well. So um, I pray that during these times that maybe you are sheltered at home, um, rather than just watching Netflix and watching a whole season of a, a show, um, open up the Word, open up your Bible, um, ask questions, um, talk to other people. And if you have questions, we'd love to discuss them here. I also want to invite you to share this with others. You could share it even after the fact that people could watch. And then on Wednesday evening, um, we are going to do a Zoom Bible study. So I'll be able to share some scriptures, put that up on the screen and, and be able to answer questions there as well. So God bless you guys. Tomorrow, Friday, 12 noon, I'd love to see you here. Uh, we uh, Friday is going to be Family Friday. We are going to talk about some specific things, some wisdom from God's Word about how we are to dwell together um, as a, a family and to love one another. So God bless you. Stay safe, and I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow.